Okay, you are now being recorded. And, and escalating the incidents. Yeah. Even worse, too. <laughs> Not enough lighting. All right. Are we, are we, are we on? Are we yeah, there? Yeah, you're is being this, recorded. Is this on? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, for those who do not know me, my name is Tuan Dean. I am a full-time faculty member here at Triton College in the Mathematics Department. I'm also one of two CTE faculty coordinators. I am today talking to all of you and those who are invited uh, also to talk about the 360 peer-to-peer. -peer. When this was designed, uh, a little history, going back to last year, I went through and talking with Shelley before accepting this position and developing a program where we as faculty members can sit and talk with each other about the best practices that we're using in the classroom. Rather than going through a workshop or a symposium or even a conference in this case, and I know that most of us, and I'll say for myself, are tired of that. You go through these symposiums, conferences, and workshops, and you hear everyone talk about what they're doing, how or what they should do, what you could do, and then what books and what other articles that you can read to use in your classroom to motivate, educate, and really get your students um, inspired in learning in the classroom. What I decided in this case is sitting down talking to Shelly, for those who don't know Shelly Torres, who is the director of the CTE, I decided to put a program together where we as faculty members, <coughs> full-time and part-time, regardless of what area that you're coming from, mathematics, education, engineering, architecture, computers, or even science, we sit together, we talk about what best practices that we're using in our classes and how we partner up with someone from our not department in this case can change that so for example one of the best practices in the case is using projects in the classroom to help students educate and then help them to be more familiarized with the subject some people do some people don't so in this case you partner with maybe someone that's not in the department let's just education for example and see what they're doing and maybe tweak what are the things that they're doing in their classes to motivate their students and educate their students so the ideal of 360, um, in this case, is no mathematics. It means that we're going all the way around. So we start at our introduction, get to know who we are working with. So that'll be the first meeting that we're going to have. In the first meeting, you're going to be partnered up with someone that's not in your department. Um, the way we're going to do that, I figure we'll do it just Fun-wise, we'll just pull a name or a number out of a hat, or in this case, and then you're partnered with that person. However, you cannot be partnered with someone that's in the same department. That's the requirement. Second, you and that person will sit together, give you about 10 to 15 minutes to talk about how you're going to put your schedules together, how you're going to visit each other's class. Now, the visit of the classroom for all of you is based on your schedule. You don't have to go multiple times. You can go one time you and that person that you're partnering with would decide that. So this for example, if I'm partnering with Francis, who's working in architecture in this case, we decide on the month of February, I will go to one of her classes that fits in my schedule, observe her class, see how she's using best practices. Then in the month of March, she would do the opposite and come to my class and see how I'm using best practices in mathematics. We'll sit down and have a conversation. It could be over lunch, dinner, maybe good coffee, if. You drink coffee, I drink tea, just throwing it out there. Uh, but just sit down and talk about how we're using best practices. And then at the end, we all come together as a group and discuss what we've learned from each other. Within that, the way this program is designed as well too, by the vice president as well too, we have to do a reflection. So that reflection, which is very short for all of you, is just to say what we've learned from each other and what best practices that we're using and how we're changing those best practices within our own curriculum. So for example, again, if um, Francis in architecture is using some type of, what's a good practice? She's using, what's a good one? Um, internships. She's using an internship in this case, and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I will write down some things that I've learned from that internship or how she designed the internship for her students to get them to be more understanding in the area of architecture to give them that practice of architecture, but give them that real world experience. And then hopefully, hopefully design it within mathematics to do the same thing. I know most of you are probably thinking that it cannot be done, but that's the ideal, learning from each other what can be done in the classroom and maybe modifying it to our own classes. 
Another practice that I use in this case, I use um, in the sense of best practices, I actually use multiple exams. It's called an equitable exam. Um, with that, the, the, the exam that I design for my students in this case is based on the conversations I have with them. So if I have students from architecture or education or even a science discipline, I will have problems designed in the exam based on those students. So the students may not take all the same exams. I know it's a lot more work on my end, but I want them to get that field of understanding that mathematics is just not in the classroom. It's also in their discipline. So using problems based on when I've talked to them from education and um, computer science, chemistry, mathematics, or even biology or even architecture, find problems that relate to them and show them how it relates to the projects that they're gonna be doing. Another example that I use for best practice in my class, which is Math 102, which is our quantitative, sorry, our liberal arts math class for all of you, I design multiple projects as well too. The projects are designed based on the conversations I have with my students. So if I have students who are in, let's say for example, in the science discipline, I will group them together and design a project that will relate to the science discipline they're in, but also uses the mathematics that we talked about in the classroom. It gives them an understanding that mathematics is just not in the classroom. It is also going to be in their discipline that they're going to, but then also something they can use as a portfolio to say what they've learned in the classroom. In fact, a portfolio for all of you is a best practice as well too. Students can use that to for their dream institution after Triton say what they've learned in the classes that they took here. So with the pro I mean, excuse me, with the program for all of you, it's a, that is the idea of it, is to get all of us to get together, talk about what we're using in the classroom, and maybe exchange different ideas, different scenarios, different things that we're doing. We've had workshops that talk about Triton is using best practices. And again, this is not that type of workshop where we're going to be sitting down and listening to a speaker come in. We're listening to ourselves and how we're using best practices in the classroom. The way is everything is going to be tracked, it will be tracked by administration, let's say that we're doing. Um, we're meeting a course of four times out of the semester. The first one, the introduction, will give us an introduction of each other, the departments that we're working in, and then also be where you're going to be partnered with your prospective um, partner peer. The second uh, meeting is us to get together and talk about what we've learned from our encounter. So again, if you're meeting with one of your peers in his or her classroom, you may want to share with the group what you've learned from that experience and what you may want to change. The second, third, sorry, the third meeting, again, is the same wrap up of saying what we've learned from each other, because that'll give an opportunity for you to visit that person's classroom as a person visits your classroom as well. And then final, the final um, meeting in this case is the wrap up of what we've learned all together, what best practices are, and how we can use them to better facilitate classes here at Triton College for our students and for ourselves to make the classes a little more interesting as well. That's just me. That's what I was thinking of. I am now going to open it up to everyone who's here. I thought it was on. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. Um, I'm now going to open up to anyone having any questions, because this is just what it is. It's a question, it's a Q&A to understand what the 360 peer-to-peer -peer program is about. So, do like I make let me let me start on? to this. <laughs> yes. Uh, to my understanding, first you want to create. First, we want to understand each discipline, practice, best practice. Lesson. Well, it's not. It's pretty I much mean, from each other first. Right. This is the learning. But right. That'll be the learning. What is the of. best work? What is the best field practice with your student? Correct. Second, you want to create like a project to bridge to this area. Yes. Not a project. What you're doing in this case is we're discussing some of the things that you learn from your peer of how they use their best practice in their classroom and how you can change it to implement in your class. Because all of us teach different, different disciplines. So for my class teaching mathematics, that was the one thing I designed for best practice. Um, and I told my students in the liberal arts math class, they can use this project as part of their um, portfolio to say what they've learned in the class when they go to their next institution. Good. Now, some of them don't do it, but that's fine. But um, within the write-ups of impact, um, best practices, it is in there. Have students do a project or do some type of portfolio. 
Now, again, I present it to my students and say this is something they can use when they go to their next institution because I'm thinking for my students, Math 102, that's the only math class they have to take. They go to their four-year institution. Now the institution say, what, what did you learn in your math class? <coughs> so they can use the project and say, well, this is what I learned, and my instructor put it all together to show how I can use it in my discipline. I mean, I definitely am. Um very supportive to the idea of portfolio to for students to develop. Mm -hmm. I mean, because this kind of like uh, help them really through not only the academic process and only, only like you said in real life, like if once they apply for a job and, and so they go back and see like what they did after all, like what we what we learning, what our goal was, what our learning objective, how we met, this is what our and you're right. And I'm very glad to have that because it's, I see like this is more we are student concerned here, like we are targeting students mostly, and to and doing our best to focusing on only student and the achievement. Yes, mm -hmm. that would be great. And in the meantime, maybe in the future we can sign kind of like about something like collaborate between different areas. That is. Futurely, um, futuristic Futurely. in this case, I know, yes. <laughs> futuristic of me thinking that because, like I said, when I spoke to Shelly, this is way before coming to the plan that we have for the institution because I remember being an adjunct um, instructor here at Triton and I didn't really have that communication with anyone else. Well, let me take it back because I actually forced myself to do it because I was like, I'm teaching here at Triton. I need to know what's going on at Triton. So a lot of um, peers here think I've been here thousands of years. It's because I went around to every department. I went around to people. I've been I participated in things on campus just to find out what type of students I have. Okay. Because at the other institutions I taught at, they were not the same students. And being here, I've learned there are a lot of things I went to try. And I was like, well, it didn't work. But I'm going to try this. Because of the fact that math, for me, the students <coughs> I did, ugh, they hate it. Or especially if they were taking developmental math and saying, oh my God, this is taking so long, or they've been in the class multiple times. I've been tr I was trying different things to show them that mathematics is just not in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So in back of my mind, I'm thinking the students are saying, well, professor, because you already know math. Yeah, but I have to step out of the shoes of the instructor and saying, what if I'm a student? What if I don't understand? What, what things can I do in the classroom to help them understand it? And how it applies so not only to your discipline, not only yours, or yours, or yours. A lot of students in this case think that math is just in the classroom, so they put that isolation <coughs> on it. So my idea was to break it, to break away from that. I do have colleagues, I hate to say this, and maybe Shelly will back me up and say yes, but we have colleagues in this case that only figure that mathematics is in the classroom. It's not. And the things that we use as high impact practices is to show them that it can be other places they can do it. So you're right. I think the idea of putting this together was more of the program of having us to come together and saying, oh, what are you doing in your class? Oh, my God, I never knew that. Because a lot of times, most of us, and I say all of us as instructors, full time and part time, we don't go through enough workshops here at CTE to, to listen to our colleagues. And I'm hoping as this informal 360 peer to peer is that we'll give enough people to say, oh, you know what? We're just going to sit there and talk. Yes, let's learn from each other. You don't have to worry about a presentation. You don't have to worry about jotting down notes. You don't have to worry about, oh, it's going to take three hours. You don't have to worry about those things. You're worrying about, let's meet people from different departments. One. Two, let's find out what they're doing in their classes. And three, the most important thing is, what can we change within ourselves, within our own classes? Because, again, um, I look at Richard teaching chemistry and, yeah, chemistry. Uh, <laughs> but this, yeah, it's all science. It's all science. But nevertheless, teaching um, biology, you have a lot of nursing students in your courses. I do too. And then most students are like, well, I took his class, but how is this related to that? I've never sat down and said, you know what, let me go over to Richard's class and actually sit down and talk with him. And this is actually the, my point is I need to make sure that besides we are doing a great job in classroom, we want to create a bridge between us. There between it is. math and science. Not only just math and science. Math I mean, not only, I'm too. just saying like, but because guess, if the student ambition to be a nurse, at least we need to create like a string in this 
Right. You might actually give them variety of the bridges, but this is what they focus. If we know that this is what they they want to go. You're right. Look, what is the nursing? Is. You're absolutely correct because nurses also have to take an education class. Yes. In your department. And so you're right. It's the idea of just English and all of that. You're actually right. So the idea, like I said, when I was telling Shelley about this, and this big umbrella in my head, I was like, you know, I've been through all this before, but let's let's do it in the sense that when I went to the symposium and backed it up when Dr. Johnson, who teaches at Florida State University, now she is. <laughs> at first I kept saying Tennessee, but she's in Florida State. When she presented this to her colleagues, she said, be careful because you may not get a lot of people. She only had 10 people in the beginning, but she said the way it was designed for their institution, they are required to do the hours. So they had to do so many hours each a month in order to get the the, the college to sign off on it. Here, I was looking at, well, you know, do we have that? You know, are we going to force students? I mean, students, are we going to force employees to do it? Well, you know, we're not going to get that many. So when I was looking at it and saying, let's do it as a free opening and saying, let's just talk. Maybe as a start, like you're saying, because that's what it is, it's the start to see exactly how many people we can get into it, into the 360 peer to peer. And then hopefully, as next year comes about and as those who participated this year or this semester and say, oh my God, it was great. I learned so much from X and Y and Z's department. I'm going over to their class in this case. Oh my God, Richard is doing this in biochemistry. It's funny, you had a class right across, um, across the hall from mine one semester too and it was just so funny. But he's doing these wonderful things in there. I'm like, oh my God, I should go to his class. We hear about it in this buzz around campus, but we never, ever do it. And hopefully this will open the door and saying, you know, hey, we're all here to educate our students because it's not your students, not your students, not yours, not yours, not mine, not even hers. They're all our students. And I think that's what I'm trying to do as well too. And I'm also trying to push away this objective of saying there's full-time and part-time as well too because I hate that with a passion. We're all instructors. How much you hate? I hate it with so much that I can things. spit in front of people's faces. And that's, I can feel my parents hit me on the back of my neck saying that's rude. Um, because I remember one person, I was walking and the car stopped them and said, well, do you know this direction? And the first thing the person said, I'm a part-time instructor. That, that makes no sense. That should never be something that we should say. And as I said, we're full time or part time. The person saw you as an instructor. That's all they see. So therefore, getting off that podium, yes, those are the things that I thought about. It's more um, in the sense of, yeah, meeting. Because we do have this for tenure track. For those who don't know, it's the full time as we go through a tenure track program. And then we meet those in our same tenure group. But then we're like, oh, okay, we're now branched out and now put into the pool and say, oh, we're now full time. Richard, for example, and I are in the same tenure group, but it's been a while since I've seen him. Why? Because he's in his department and I'm in mine. Does that make a difference? No, it doesn't. Should I make an effort? We should. We should make an effort to see what we're doing in other departments. And you're right. Maybe other departments are doing something that are attracting students and saying, oh, my, I, I did this in my class. Maybe if we do that in this class as well, too, Professor Dean. Hmm, never thought of that. Maybe go to that person's class and see what they're doing. So that's, yeah, that was it. Because like Francis, for example, I had one of her students um, for architecture. And I'm going to use the person, but not the name. The students struggled because of mathematics. So I had to find things that related to architecture to help them understand how it was going to be used. Now, would I have other colleagues do that? No because that's probably why the student didn't do well in the first class. But that's me. That's me. <clears throat> All right. Off the pedals. Mm -hmm. Just like I do in the classroom. Well, so for years when I, before I became full time, I had more time. And I would take classes. I would take that one free class every semester, mm -hmm. mainly in VIC, but I took art classes. I took some classes in my own department. And I, that's why I wanted to do this because I'm like, oh, I'm going to put that in my syllabus or I'm going to do that. I take a little piece from what other people did. Exactly. Exactly. And you may, and again, I'm hoping that 
um, maybe to five o'clock we'll have a lot more people because there's supposed to be an additional three people who are not here. That we find out, we get this uh, group together and we exchange those different ideas. Because again, the presenter who came in for the fall um, to do our presentation, I mean, not a presentation, the workshop saying that Triton already uses best practices. And she went through a list. And at my table, I had three of my colleagues in this case saying, hmm, I don't even do that. And I'm thinking, why not? I mean, it's not that difficult to design something for your class. But instead, they use the same methodology that they've been doing 19,100 years ago. That can't happen anymore because our students are more, oh, I want to say evolved, but our students are more less practical you know, because we got to get them out of that, that COVID mode, <laughs> sitting at home and thinking that we're just going to do the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, so are you going to, when I, like, I teach all day, all night. Monday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I can't observe anybody's class. Anymore. So are you going to like put people's schedules in and try to figure it out? If something to your schedule, I mean. right? What? According to your schedule. So let's say, example, example, let's say for let's say you only teach on Monday, Wednesday, so they can't do. Let me do it like this. Let's say that you and Richard were partnered up because he's in science. Yeah, he was my observer. Your mentor. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So it's just like that. He will say, okay, well, I can come to your class on this day because it works in my schedule. And you'll say the same thing and say, oh, here's my schedule. This class works on my, I can come into your class. But if we day. both have the same schedule, then we can't do it. Then you yeah, have to switch. change to a different person. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's where the first day, when you partner up with someone, that's where the conversation is. If it doesn't it's almost work, like you need to have all the people from tonight and this afternoon into a big pool and look at schedules. And go fish. <laughs> You're right. I mean, it's it's not going to be an exact science, um, Francis, because we all have different schedules. Yeah. And the idea, like I said, when Shelley was asking that same question, it's really hard for me to say, okay, I'm a partner with you, and your schedule works with mine. It's just like with the tenure track. We had to, I shouldn't say that, but me being a mentor, I'm right now as a mentor um, for this um, for our, one of our adjuncts. His class conflicts with the class I'm teaching at the same time. So I can't go to his class. So what I did in this case, I communicated with him saying, this is the day I'm going to come to your class, but I'm going to be a little late because this is how it works in my schedule. So that that, that would be the thing I would suggest in this case, is that you two, the person that you're partnering up with, just work out what best works in the schedule for both of you. Because remember, you're only doing it one time out of the month. That's it. You're not doing it multiple times. It's just one time during the month of February, for example, you decide to do it first, you go to Rich's class, whatever class works in your yeah. schedule. I, I, I'm I the three multi be, faculty for three departments. So. It might be easier to just basically ask which days and you come on your yeah. off day, you know, to observe the other person. That's probably will be the easiest. I'm just saying, because I've mm -hmm. had trouble with CTE classes because they're they're in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. No, not anymore. I know they're not. <laughs> but they have them traditionally. Yeah. And you're right. And so the way, like I said, when I designed it, I, I, I thought of all those things. That's why I said to Shelly, it's the person who's partnered up with that person. They will create the schedule. Okay, so if we partner up with somebody that doesn't work, we'll probably say this doesn't work because our schedules. I can't miss my classes. So I know, uh, Terry, when do you teach? Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, so you're on Terry. Nice. But except they're science. Huh? Where do you teach? Are you computer science or science? No, I'm science. Yeah. And where do you teach? Science. What? Well, when? Oh, uh, when? Yeah, but they um, can't right. hear. But the they. Well, no, no, no. But which days? Uh, I mean, all four days, Monday to Thursday. Depends on the class. So if it was this, and if, let's say in this situation, because I'm I'm part of it as well too. So if it doesn't work with I teach engineering, but I'm just list. I, I wanted to listen to Tuan. I'm not signing up for the program. So if it doesn't work, then um, the last, depending on how many people we have, I'm hoping that it'll be an even number. I can only hope. If not, then we'll sit down, and that's what the first meeting is about to figure out how we're gonna, how the persons are gonna visit each other's classrooms. Um, 
yeah, I mean, me being full time uh, there's days I don't want to be here either. I shouldn't say it like that. Yeah, but it's true. But you, um, mean, it's <laughs> you know, I have. I have it's like I tell my students, I have a life outside of college as well too. But this right. is part time, full time, yeah. It's open to everyone as an instructor here at Triton. So let's say, yeah, you two would never be part because you're in the same discipline. Science, doesn't matter if it's chemistry, biology, it's the same discipline. So you'll be partnering with maybe education. You're going outside your department. That's the idea. There's no one that's in your department. So, I mean, I know that the question would be come up when someone says, well, what if we're in the same department, but we don't see each other, but you're in the same department. The ideal is to meet others outside your discipline, because outside your discipline, they're doing something totally different. different exactly. Because, Francis, I know you do an internship. For no, we don't. Oh. Architecture students are. It's a long story. Okay. Internships are hard to find, but but I think when you brought that up, I was thinking how much a week of shadowing would be good. It would be. It would be, and it still falls under high um, high impact practices as well too. Because that student gets to see what their future may look like. We do internships in renewable energy, but that's not my right. Process. The the computer science department actually um, Patrick Kane actually does that. He takes the computer science um, club. They actually go to different companies and look at how computer scientists actually use or what their degree may look like if they get that degree in this area. So he actually does do it, but it's part of the club, not a class. Yeah. So you when we tour places as part of. Exactly, exactly. So things like that, that's what we're saying. Things like that that you do within the club, like I'm part of a, a club organization here too. They do things that, could I do that in the classroom? I could. And I have one year, in this case, for my math class, we actually did a tour. We did what is called a tour of mathematics. And in that tour, they went to different places. There was five places that they had to go to to see how mathematics was actually used. When my son was an undergrad, he went to the summer, it was a three week tour of Europe because it's the history of physics. Mm -hmm. And according to the um, several books, that is still part of high impact practices because students are actually seeing where the education is going to. Um, I have taken up way too much because it's only supposed to be 30 minutes. Um, but that's really, I'm hoping to see all of you um, because it is a new program. There is a stipend that goes with it. Um, Shelly, Shelly um, Magda, and I really mm -hmm. on board for this. But then also, Shelly has been the push for this as well for the stipend through the president, the vice president, sorry. So I'm hoping that. With the discussion, like I said, the first one is really for us to get together, talk about the program, partner up with whomever we're going to partner up with, discuss how we're going to set our schedules together. And then the second meeting is to come together, maybe what we've learned from the first person where they observed, and then the second person is the next month. And then all together, we come back together as a group and talk about what we've learned all together. So are we picking today? No. Today is just orientation. Okay. So today um, <laughs> is a five o'clock orientation. The first meeting. Um, oops. When is the first meeting? It's not here. It's not here. It's not until February. It's, it's February thirteenth or right. something. Right. It's not until February. It's a Monday, right? I'm I'm not sure if it's. It is Monday. a Monday. Thirteenth. It's Monday, but I think it's it's not Valentine's Day. I know that. But yeah. it would be fifteenth, the week of the thirteenth. I think we put the first one in the catalog and the second one you were thinking I think it all came in but I didn't yeah. look into it. Yeah. So yeah, the first one is for everyone to get together, who's all gonna participate, we get all the paperwork because of the stipend, and talk about who's gonna partner with who and discuss from there. Mm -hmm. Questions for me? I just want to know when that second meeting is. Oh. Where is. Uh, Unless it was at a much later. Four o'clock. What? The February meeting. What day was it on again? I don't know. A, a last meeting? Laura, 
Nora, do see you the remember camera. the first meeting for 360? When is it? You just set it up yesterday. First meeting. It will not be in a catalog unless you put it by hand. We didn't. I thought we did. It's it's somewhere. It is. And I it's I it's not in a catalog. No. We had to have Shelly and I, because that was what Shelly had me for me, all four dates in this case. Right. All four meetings. Because that, yeah, that's, that's how it was not on the catalog, and Laura just added to the portal, and I didn't check enough to know it. Because so the vice president said can... she needs to know all four dates. Mm -hmm. Right. And if it's, because I, I got thrown into a class I wasn't expecting to get. So. Me too. What you could do is let's say the whole group is not available, then because it's a contained group, you can find if it suits your schedule. You have to see your schedule with the others. No. So, if you put it, you email us. Okay, you can email me. It's in the, it's in the okay. registration system. Like, yeah, it has to be on the campus. I had to sign off on it, and the vice president, that was, what, that was one of the criteria. She had to have all the dates. Yeah, because she was very excited about it. The, the president was too. And then I had to write up all this information, how it was supposed to be designed, what we going to be doing. Um, that's why I had to do a video because I wasn't here because of family emergency um, for the uh, workshop. Yeah. But I will, did you all sign in? I will get everything and send it out to all of you as well too. Today, we're, yeah, yeah, because you know, you're right. Because then, like I said, um, like I like when I make the proposal to them, I said, "Can we get ten? Hopefully, we get some people." But like any program you start, whoever you can get is the foundation to say this is how it's going to be designed and work from there. So yes, we'll work. Yeah, it's we'll work. just. We we'll work with it. We will work with the staff. But yeah, the first one I think it is supposed to be in February because January classes just started back. But the first one, this was supposed to be like um, for any questions that people may have and saying, what is it? Because I wasn't at the Falcon workshop. In this case. No, I just said. But, oh, sorry. Did you but sign I will, in the blue, blue form? Sorry, we're getting a little ahead of that. Did Laura, did you give them the blue form? Oh, February 7th, 7 o'clock. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday. Perfect. So same. A week. A week from today. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So pick that date. So that's what I'm thinking. Like since you have the group's name, then you can communicate if you want to change like two thirty to three thirty. Like yeah, it's a small group. But Tuesday of the first month is usually. The that's why we didn't. Yeah. yeah, that's why we didn't. I remember that's why we didn't promote it to say, hey, if you're still interested, the date should have come. She's right because, like I said, it's so hard. Vice President, Vice President, so Vice much. President Council yeah. needed dates, sure. so we just gave her. Yeah. Yeah. Some dates. Right, we gave her dates. Well, here we go. We're actually. But I will send out a, a communication yeah. for all of you, and saying this is the date that we'll meet because again, it's supposed to be really informal. So if it works in the schedule, we'll meet that day. We we'll partner up, see who we're going to partner up with, make up our schedules because I'm participating in it too. So. Hopefully that we have five.